I'm not 
live listening in the mix to Mr. Air Jackson our interview audio didn't come out so we're going to do it again in about 60 minutes until then
Shout out to the winner. He's giving out that you ain't you ain't giving a shout out. We're, we're not looking at the messages right now. Dean Sherry and live we have Air Jackson in the mix. We are going to be chatting in about 10 15 minutes, but until then, this is the best of what 10 1 has.
Okay, can hear myself now. I, I didn't have the correct channels working, the audio working for our quick intro. Uh, the last hour and a half or, or so, I can attribute to this uh, fine man here beside me. Let me introduce uh, the mighty Air Jackson. Welcome to Fever. Thank you. Uh, apologies that our, our previous chat didn't work, so we're going to have to repeat ourselves. Uh, we're going to talk about your own uh, kind of fast track career. Tell us about your own, how you, got it, how you put on a set of headphones in the first place. Yeah, so I was about... When I was about 12, I started listening to a lot of pirate radio stations, a lot of rave, hard house, uh, trance. That kind of got me into it. When I was 15, I bought my first set of belt drive decks. Um, they're, I, they're great fun. They, uh, they're great for messing around. <laughs> Probably not for a club, but I'm panicking. It was yeah. It, look, that that was my intro to it. I did it casually for about five, six years. Then started running shows, a lot of shows in Tempar Music Center. Self and Tony from Ten One Records. We ran. Um, the Tivoli for a summer the Tivoli Theatre before it became District 8 and we did a lot of kind of ad hoc shows around the place that kind of got me into it and you guys had a kind of a funky name then for a while we did we had Dirtbox it was our back to back <laughs> it was our back to back DJ name uh, we, we used to play Magruder's we I've heard of the Dirtbox and we were chatting about this uh, offside so I, I, I now I now I know yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you guys done well uh, and come here uh, I want, kind of want to come to how you got to here yeah. Uh, you moved to Amsterdam. You were over there soaking up the soaking things up. How did you kind of come to the mindset of okay, let's uh, refocus. Let's let's decide on a new artist moniker. Let's decide on a new sound. And, and like obviously there was years of nothing, and then all of a sudden, loads of quality content. Yeah, yeah. So I started when I kind of finished uh, promoting. I took a break from it. I, I had been DJing so much every weekend um, that I just found I was playing the same venues over and over, and I took a break from it for a while. I went over to Amsterdam and like, have a great seat. I I just found myself moving away from the little bits that we had. And then when I went over to Amsterdam, I spent two years just going out to all the clubs. I totally reinvigorated my passion for it. That's when I decided to do Air Jackson and to get into because I dabbled with edits and production. When I knew I had like a bit of an ear for it, but I decided to come back, make the new project of Air Jackson, and throw myself. Like to be fair, I, I, I've seen pictures of it. You know, I, I've heard the outputs of his shoot. That just doesn't happen overnight. No, it was built over. I've I've been back from Amsterdam there for three years. So not for three years. Um, I've been recording the album for about uh, two. I started in September 2019, pre-COVID. Then uh, COVID hit. I didn't know what to do with it. Like, better to make it more down tempo, or but I stuck with it. Made well, it a dance floor record, and that's why I delayed the release. Well, as I mentioned, um, I, I got the promo off the, off the promo companies about, about two months ago, and I got yeah. the album, and the album said an Irish artist, so that immediately flagged my interest. And I had a listen, it was a 12, 14 track album, and every track, like every track was different, but every track had a certain groove and a certain, like it, it sucked me in, grabbed me, and that's why I reached out to you to, to, make, the, make, to make today happen for a start. Um, the process behind that just didn't happen overnight, so uh, tell us about the production process, because... It was exceptional. Yeah, yeah. So I started in September 2019 for three tracks, and I wanted to make it neat for an album. And I decided to get into the album route. I started with the singles. Well, yeah, I was kind of. They were three singles, and I didn't know because I was at that time. I wanted 
gotta be big. I'm now kind of moving away from I'm gonna start going down the route. Um, but yeah, I'd say it took about actual six months to mix you, and master it. Which all of a sudden you got an album out of something that started as a couple of singles. Yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> no, absolutely. I'm delighted I did it. And none it was, of them sound, but even, it'd be wrong for me to say that they all sound similar. They certainly don't. They're all different. Uh, but there's there's a common vein and there's a common energy. Um, and we were speaking about this offline. Um, like the level of quality through it all, and it's all different and it's all kind of, it's all very exciting to be fair you didn't set out to make a techno album to make a house album you just went and made a fucking great album yeah thank you and i really appreciate you saying that there was no blueprint for what i wanted it to be i just my mind doesn't make the same tune twice so if i make a techno tune mine goes make a breakbeat tune next or make a drum and it's just i don't know what it is in me that just makes me want to just do different things and change up what i'm doing probably to keep it interesting